everybody and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure product review. In today's review I'm going to be taking a look at yet another B&M exclusive action figure collector set, in fact one of the latter releases as a part of the 2020 series. This time round a rather unexpected and unusual action figure collector set from the 12th Doctor era being the Witch's Familiar collector set featuring a variant of the 12th Doctor as portrayed by Peter Capaldi alongside a brand new variant of the new series version of Davros, originally released as a part of the Series 4 range back in 2008. The recommended retail price for this set is £19.99, however I am going to cover myself depending on when it comes to uploading this review, as quite a lot of the B&M collector sets recently have been reduced in price to around £12, so who knows, by the time this review is actually going out, it might be reduced in price. So taking a look at the packaging, this is exactly the same style guide to usual, so as always we get a lovely preview window giving a good look at the figures on the inside of the box. At the very bottom we get the inclusion of the limited edition sticker as well as the title of the set and the character options logo as well as the mistake stating that this story aired in 1988, which of course it didn't. We get the inclusion of the stacked Doctor Who logo as well as the TARDIS graphic. Of course we've all seen this style guide a lot already, so character options details at the bottom, Doctor Who logo at the top, and of course a TARDIS graphic there at the side as well. Flipping around to the back, finally we get a little bit of information repeated, as well as the title of the set and images of the two action figures out of the box. To this set aiming for the collectors, we also have a little bit of a write-up about the story, and correctly stating this episode did in fact air in 2015. I suppose in a way this set is technically an extension of the history of the Daleks series, so as a result we do get the inclusion of a diorama specialised for the story of the Witch's Familiar, including of course the main Dalek city on Skaro, with a little bit of a glimpse of the outside world and the alien landscape as well, which again is a really lovely and unique touch. So here we have the 12th Doctor and Davros out of the box, and I must admit it is really lovely to have a piece of 12th Doctor themed merchandise, because back when Peter Capaldi's episodes were airing, the era did seem rather neglected from a merchandise perspective. Of course we did get the occasional 12th Doctor action figure here and there, of course in different suits and different shirts and things like that. That was pretty much it, aside from the odd variant of Missy. Not particularly too exciting. It is really lovely to have the 12th Doctor packaged alongside a villain from his era, although yes, given it is a re-release of a villain that we have already, it's still nice just to have them packaged within a product together. The 12th Doctor figure of the set utilises the Series 9 Rocker 12 outfit seen upon two previous occasions as a part of the Cartridge Options action figure line, this time painted up to look like his costume as seen throughout the Series 9 opening stories, The Magician's Apprentice and The Witch's familiar, and it definitely works. In the centre of the outfit we have the inclusion of one of the most notable changes, being the grey shirt, replacing the black dotted design and the white and pink floral looking affair seen on the previous two releases. A dirtied white base has been used with a grey wash on top to give the impression of a pitcher present underneath. Surrounding this is the inclusion of a black jacket, highlighted with silver paint apps on the zipper, which is also changed in colour from the dark blue and dark green seen on the original releases. As we turn to look at the back, the black paint apps can be followed up to the hood, sitting naturally on the 12th Doctor's shoulders, with various creases and folds within this. The original two Series 9 12th Doctor jackets had a rather dark blue finish. This time round, this has been replaced by what seems to be an even darker, jet smoky black design. Various stitching lines can be seen on the back and front of the jacket, and the buttons of the cuffs are no longer painted. The same can also be said on the buttons on the front of the jacket itself, next to the lapels, still present although not highlighted with a black paint application, unlike the previous releases. Something that I'm rather surprised to see on this B&M set is the continuation of the red lining within the 12th Doctor's coat, and this is in fact really neat and has been done with a glossy red paint application. It adds a little sprinkling to this otherwise quite dark costume, however it is in fact quite difficult to see, so it kind of makes it even nicer that has been included as a little bonus feature. 
As we move down to the trousers, we have the inclusion of a black base colour, and a light grey check pattern added over the top, a lovely attention to detail, and different from the previous two Twelfth Doctors, including one which sported a yellow check design, and one which was a standard black. The combination of paint and the creasing within the sculpt gives the trousers a worn and faded finish, which is really lovely. As for the boots, they are the same sculpt to usual, including various panels and laces. This has been finished off with a glossy jet black paint application, with a lighter grey sole. Something of course that we do have to mention, which is an issue with all of these Series 9 12 Doctors, is the fact that alongside any other character options action figures, he does look absolutely ridiculous. For some reason, something went wrong somewhere, and as a result, he is a lot taller than everybody else. I mean, even the comparison between him and David Tennant there, so John Pertwee and him you can get away with. However, there's some figures the likes of, say, A, that has been also released as a part of this series recently, where he just looks completely ridiculous next to. Now, from what I understand, it is in fact an issue with the sculpting of the shoes. However, to me, I think the whole proportions of the entire figure has probably gone wrong somewhere, leading to this rather unusual concoction. From what I understand, this is in fact meant to be the proper scale for the Doctor Who action figure line. All the action figures that we've ever got as a part of this series have in fact not been in the proper scale. So when they do do a figure right, it looks weird. And of course, no Twelfth Doctor action figure would be complete without a questionable likeness. Again, the same old problems apply, where the sculpt seems to have a lot of potential, clearly looking like Peter Capaldi. And yet, the paint application over the top seems to drown out all of the finer design. Such as any concept of ageing, he looks about 12. The eyes are painted in a rather wide manner with a light blue iris, and above this we have the trademark attack eyebrows that stand out perfectly. The lips have also received a subtle light pink paint application, and overall the skin tone looks natural. It's just a shame that he continues to look so fresh-faced. Around the eyes you can see what looks like wrinkles within his frown, but again, this has been partially lost due to the paint used. The hair looks great and follows a similar process to the original releases. A dark base colour has been used with a stunning shock of grey thrown in on top, drawing attention to the curls and strands of hair. This may just be my eyes personally, but I do think that this has been blended ever so slightly better compared to the original releases. Rather unusually, the original Series 9 Twelfth Doctors did come packaged with the blue sonic screwdriver that the Twelfth Doctor did have in Doctor Who Series 10. It was kind of just a way of being able to introduce the new sculpt, even though it wasn't present for that Doctor Who Series 9. Sadly, this collector set doesn't feature the sonic screwdriver. To be honest, it would have been nice, especially given that the Coal Hill collector set comes with the rocket launcher from the original Ace release, as well as the bag pack. It would have been quite good to have a Dalek gun or something like that for the Twelfth Doctor to hold, or even just a regular sonic screwdriver, just so he had something to be displayed with, although sadly, he doesn't come with anything. Due to the Twelfth Doctor action figure being one of the more recent sculpts that character options have created, of course the articulation does have a number of additional extra points, including the board joints at the shoulders, something of which that isn't present on the older character options releases, and overall makes the figure rather nice to display in a various different dynamic positions that the Twelfth Doctor does of course do quite a lot within his promotional material. So overall for the Twelfth Doctor, it's a nice variant to be honest, I think it is a really lovely addition to the shelf and perfect to display alongside Davros. One of the added incentives of this Twelfth Doctor in particular is from what I can remember, the original Series 9 Twelfth Doctors were rather heavily priced, I do believe they're around 15 to 20 pounds, which of course this set in itself has recommended retail of around 20 pounds. So if you missed out on that original version of the Twelfth Doctor, this is a perfect opportunity to add an additional variant to the shelf, as well as being packed packaged alongside Davros. Overall, the paint application is really nice. The improvements that have been made are lovely. I do like the inclusion of the grey jumper. However, again, it's just a shame about the likeness, or at least the paint application that has been used. Next up, we have Davros, and I'm going to place a bet now that this is only just the beginning of Dr. Davros collector sets coming to B&M over the next few years, so we're most probably going to see the re-release of quite a number of classic series Davros variants, which I think to quite a lot of collectors will indeed be rather welcome. Originally released in 2008, it's great to see this Davros once more. My version from back in the day is in fact the remote control one. As a kid, I used to decide between wanting either the standard variation 
generation or the remote control versions as opposed to getting one of each because let's face it I was eight years old and I was working on a child collector's budget. Starting off at the base it's very familiar to that of other new series Dalek sculpts. The fender is split into various sections with rivets holding each panel together. On the 2008 version such rivets have been highlighted with a silver paint application. This is not present on the B&M version with the entire fender piece sculpted in what seems to be a slightly metallic darker grey plastic. As much as it is a shame to see the absence of this more intricate detail, I'm not necessarily surprised given that the previously released B&M Big Finish Daleks also had a lack of this detail. The skirt section of Davros features one of the most obvious changes, with the B&M Davros adopting a similar colour style to that of the History of the Daleks series, making the silver sections more nice and shiny. This is absolutely perfect and stands out so much more when next to the original release. The hemispheres on my Davros have been painted very well, keeping within the lines, but due to it using a black base, I definitely advise going into store and scrutinising the set that you are about to purchase in order to avoid paint leaks. Of course, due to this figure using a regular Dalek base, it does have a number of wheels at the very bottom, including the spinny one at the very front, as well as two at the back, meaning that you can, of course, wheel about and do various Dalek things. The top half of Davros also continues the lovely silvery design, making the 2008 variation almost look darker and subdued. On the back we have Davros's back support, as after all, he is an old man. This does have a few small details of various panels and struts, however nothing really too exciting to talk about. And of course no Davros will be complete without some pretty buttons for him to press when he gets bored and wants to kill somebody for the fun of it, and this figure is no exception. The front panel is littered with switches and buttons, all of which have various different coloured paint applications. Some of the switches are bigger than others, however you can position the robotic hand to make it look like he's pressing them. The glove also contains some great details, presenting his almost skeletal robotic hand nicely. At the opposite side there is also a few additional buttons which have been painted using a yellow highlight, as well as the big blue orb in the middle. Davros's straight jacket is sculpted in a black plastic with a series of creases to replicate the material effect. At one side there is also the series of clasps which have been highlighted using a silver paint application. One of the biggest differences between new series Davros and classic series Davros is this rather large contraption on the back of the head. Of course the classic version does have a similar thing to this, however a much smaller scale that's kind of just some padded material. This time around you have this whole frame mesh section with some panelling around the back, which again has been excellently recreated almost as vent design here at the very middle as you spin around to the first set at the very front of also get the inclusion of the helmet section on top of Davros's head and this also goes around the back of the skull as well. No additional paint application on this, it has just been sculpted in a standard silver plastic and of course it's that metallic sheen that the rest of the Davros body has as well as the shoulder pads as well, a lovely touch where both of those are a little bit shinier compared to the original version. It's great to see that they are also not warped. A lot of the classic series Davroses have that rather sad, annoying warped effect where the plastic hasn't set properly, but on this figure it does seem to be rather precise, sitting on the shoulders rather well. Likeness and sculpt for Davros's head is stunning, although sadly remains very, very similar to the original 2008 version, which I think is a missed opportunity. As per usual, his face remains gaunt, with the flesh sagging down to make it look like he is a decaying cadaver. The bone structure is present around his eyes, emphasising the darker highlights around his eye sockets. The face has been given an overall darker grey wash, not present on the original version of Davros, which is welcome, although a few additional skin tones changes would have been ideal. The central blue eye is much more toned down compared to the original version, with a darker shade of blue blended into the brown around the sides. There is also an absence of the small white detailing which was present on the original version. I mentioned earlier, I got rather lucky when it came to the hemispheres on the skirt where all of the paint application seems to be very sharp and there is certainly an absence of paint leak. However, I do have a little bit of an issue when it comes to the face. As you can see, if you look carefully, there is a little bit of a black dot there on the nose where the paint has been scuffed away, something of which I didn't realise until a few hours after opening this product. So yes, maybe I might need to get some brown paint or a felt tip or something like that and kind of paint his nose a little bit. It's not too noticeable, it doesn't really bother me too much, but hey, it's still a little bit frustrating. As 
mentioned previously for articulation, of course on the base you do have a series of wheels and the arms do of course move as well, or the arm. We have a little bit going up and down there, bending at the elbow, and then we also have a rotation at the wrist as well. His head does also move from side to side, however on this version it does seem considerably stiff, but that's probably because it's a new figure just out of the box. And finally, just to finish off this review, because I'm feeling a little bit generous, here is a comparison to some of the other Davros action figures that we've seen released over the past few years as a part of the classic series action figure line of other Davros from New Series Doctor Who that we are reviewing currently is in fact quite a lot larger compared to the other versions to kind of represent the bulkier design of Dalek that we see in New Series Doctor Who compared to the smaller classic series design. So there we have it, that is my review of the Doctor Who b &M exclusive 2020 The Witch's Familiar action figure collector set featuring the 12th Doctor as portrayed by Peter Capaldi alongside Davros as portrayed by Julian Bleach. Overall for this collector set, again I rephrase what I said at the very beginning of this review, it's still a set that I'm rather surprised to see released because it's a 12th Doctor product and I'm kind of just used to 12th Doctor products not happening and it's really lovely to see him packaged alongside a villain as a part of his era. Of course this is a great collector set to get a 12th Doctor that from my understand has gone on to be considerably rare. I do believe that the Series 9 ones do fetch a little bit of money online by this point and of course Davros has been released a whole 12 years ago by this point. It's great to also see a new opportunity to get a new version of Davros with a few paint application changes. In particular of course that silver highlight on the hemispheres as well as the other silver sections and of course that wash applied to the face as well. As for the 12th Doctor and his paint upgrades of course the grey shirt is really lovely. However, sadly, some paint application changes I think would have been both justified and, to be honest, help this set sell would have been making the likeness look more like Peter Capaldi, getting rid of that thick paint application and doing something a bit more precise, replicating the age of some of the classic series Doctors, a similar style to that of the first Doctor, where you have those really precise paint applications, would have been very, very welcome. However, sadly, this figure doesn't have that. But if you're a fan of the Doctor like I am is still a nice figure to add to the shelf and a welcome variant as well. So yes, overall for the Witch's Familiar Collector set, it's alright. If you like Davros and Capaldi, it's perfect for you. It's not necessarily an essential. You're certainly not getting anything too new with the Davros if you already have the original version other than the shininess of the silver. And the Twelfth Doctor isn't particularly anything too special either. So to be honest, I recommend this one more so for the collectors rather than the occasional buyers. So thank you very much for watching this review, I really hope you have enjoyed it. Do of course stay tuned on the host productions for brand new Doctor Who content each and every week from audio drama reviews, product reviews and much much more. And on that note, have a nice day and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.